This guy brought in his, his NTI device. Wasn't helping him. Because he could do that. So, okay, I'll make you a lower device. I'm making lowers nowadays. I make it with acrylic. And, and he did that. I wasn't paying attention. I was being too sloppy. I should have taken the device before we started. I could have added the acrylic at the same at the same time as I was seating the device. A lot of times I would do that. Sometimes if I know they can protrude and I'm going to need to add to the back end of the DE, I've got extra acrylic in my dish. Put the thing in, they'll bite on it, they open up and I'll take some of that acrylic and I'll blob it onto the back. I'll go back and sculpt it later, but at least I had the acrylic mixed up and ready to go. I hate mixing it twice and adding it twice. I'm just like everybody else. I don't want to do it, but I got to do it right. I'm obligated to do it right. So when I did add to it, then I had to ramp it down so I didn't, if I had made it level with the entire device, he would have had excessive vertical, excessive rotation in that protrusion. So if someone has a large class two, I'd make an upper device and that DE sort of hugs the pallet. You won't even need it. You won't even need that part of it. You don't want to have a big, huge diving board unsupported out there. Because you could hurt somebody with that thing. <laughs> if they're class three and the discluding element extends that far back, can they put their tongue underneath and push the thing out? That's kind of weird. What do you do with a class three? And you don't want to jam that thing back in their face. You don't want to have that, you don't want a coat hanger thing out there that can hang stuff on. You don't want a big, huge beak. So you take two devices and split the difference between the discluding elements. So I've taken to making uh, dueling devices a lot lately. When I, th when I think I've, I've been trying for so long to make one device do everything, and I've been handcuffing myself. I mean, you start to use a, an opposing device and you get to do a lot more. What, what about the, the vertical dimension? Well, at a class three, with the, the, this is so, this is like three millimeters. You're not very far open back there. You might have to really stack that thing up. So you don't get a whole lot of opening back here. So the more you open way out in the front, you're only opening a little bit way back here. So you might have to put three millimeters, five millimeters here just to get one opening, one opening in the back. Here is a group parafunction. These canines didn't used to be flattened right there, and I'll bet you there was a day that these canines had more enamel on them and these teeth weren't touching an excursion. So here's this NTI device. I'm trying to get, you know, minimal vertical degree of opening here. And those canines used to be a little bit bigger. And when they were, there was no group parafunction. So now when I've got this NTI, and I know because of that way of those canines, I know the guy is going over to the side. So I want minimal opening, minimal, minimal vertical when he goes sideways. And I, here's my minimal, and I've got that canine contact now. And I know he loves to get after those canines. So instead of increasing here, the remedy is that. There, I just unplugged it. He had, he had circuitry completion, now he doesn't. In fact, I wouldn't mind shortening the canines a little bit more, shaving down more plastic and closing them still further. When someone has a uh, left joint clicking and catching and right joint painful upon biting, chronic headaches, facial pain and pressure, what's a person got to do to get all of those things? And then you look at the goofy wear facets on their teeth. How do you get eh, 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 that kind of a notch? Here comes the targeting. So now you've got circuitry completion on this side, circuitry completion on that side. This side is a translated condyle during clenching. On the left side, great way to, main, to really mess up your internal derangement. 
this right side has gone up and rotated back a little bit when your jaw does this. So when she chews and closes, this right side is painful upon biting because she's been rotating and jamming it backwards. She's swollen and tender back there upon elevations. With facial pain and pressure, this lateral pterygoid is doing some exquisite work to move this thing around. It's sort of like she has created the class three at that moment. The problem with class three is there's no canine rise during parafunction. There's no incisal guidance if they're parafunctioners. So when they shift sideways, they don't have the ability to have these canines to, on our, to disclude molars on our behalf. They shift sideways and they can get both sides to contact at the same time. You get some really wild temporal mandibular disorders when you have zero ability to borrow the canine's efforts for you. So does class three cause TMD? No, it sure makes it easier to enhance your condition. This guy came down from LA and uh, he's gonna have left joint pain, history of lavage up in that joint. He's had splints before. Number 18's had two root canals. 18 still hurts. He's had left sinus pressure and the history of sinus surgery. They've rinsed out his sinuses. Chronic headache, stiff and sore neck, and migraines. What's a guy gotta do to have all of those things happen? Oh, by the way, 18 is out of occlusion right now. It's already been reduced down significantly. But this is down. So in this clench, 18's not touching anything. It still hurts. He still complains about it. What's he got to do? Oh, well, look at this. He's got no canine rise. I'll bet you if he were to move his jaw to the right, he could just clobber number 18. And so he does. So we need to do a, a third root canal. Yeah, you need to, yeah. <laughs> I want to check. Must have missed the canal. Well. And did he say, but I don't do that? Oh, wait, no, no, no. oh, wait till you see what he shows me. So I say, well, move your jaw over to the side because he listed off these things and all I know is what I know. I'm instantly trying to say, if it's this, you gotta do this, you gotta do this. this is gonna, that fits. Let me see. Make your jaw go way over to the side because at this moment in time, his left lateral pterygoid, is it pulling on the condyle or pulling on the pterygoid plate of the sphenoid bone? It's both. So his sinuses, they'll, he will complain and they'll do surgery. If you ask for it, they'll, sure, here's the code. <laughs> so I'm telling this guy, well, I think I know what I can help you with. And he takes out the glow in the dark box. He goes, oh, you mean one of these? So he puts in his lower NTI device. And he did what it took to maintain that contact. So he just, his jaw moved over some more in order to maintain that thing. So the condition was out to make to look, that practitioner look bad. Did a great job at it. At least, at least the guy gave it one more shot. So that's the treatment right there. And when I reduced it, he moved some more. Because he could, so he did. I don't, and I got pretty aggressive. <laughs> oh no, I love big fat football diamond burrs. 